Hi guys, welcome. So we're going to have a look at a um, uh, pretty straightforward and simple management process today. And I believe that as a diagnostic tool, it can help you unlock any management problem that you've got going on. So when we're thinking about management, we're not thinking about leadership. Leadership is about hearts and minds and, 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 and trust to get developing trust and inspiring people to follow you and go on the journey. We're thinking about management and management in the context of uh, management is about competency and efficiency. So it's about training people and getting efficient systems and managing your people through that. So I'm going to go back to a, an action coach core principle. And one of the core principles we talk about is the point of power. Sometimes we talk about that as above and below the, the line. So I always think about this. I'll introduce it and then I'll tell you how I think about it. So above the line, we've got ownership, we've got accountability, and we've got responsibility. And then below the line, we've got blame, excuse, and denial. So the simple theory of this is, if we own the problem, if somebody is responsible for solving the problem, and that person is being held accountable and think about the word account and accountancy and numbers tend to be in the accountability so we start thinking about kpis then we're very much in control we're very much making things happen however if we're below the point of power and we've got blame or we're making excuses or we're in denial that there is actually a problem then we're going nowhere we're in bed Blame, excuse, denial. And so one of the things I do with my clients is, you know, when things aren't working really, really well, I'm saying, mm, I'm hearing excuses here now. <laughs> and I use this as a diagnostic tool. If we're hearing excuses, then there is a simple absence of one or more of these elements above the line. If we're hearing excuses, if, if we're hearing blame, I can pretty much rest assured in my thinking that Somebody hasn't taken ownership of the situation. Somebody hasn't been made responsible for fixing the situation or developing the situation, and nobody's being held to account. And that's how I think about this as a, as a model. As a diagnostic tool, somebody says, oh, so-and-so hasn't done this. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. Who owns the problem? Who was given the responsibility for sorting the problem out? And once we start to think about that and who was holding them to account and what was the method of accountability, what was the numeric process in checking whether that was working, whether they were doing what they were supposed to be doing, and we generally start to fix the problem from it. Now, when we get into a, a little bit more detail on that, this is a little bit more complicated, but here's a management process. So simple management process. In any business, we seek to systemize part of the business, number one. When we've created the system, we train somebody or multiple people to operate that system. Pretty logical. Once we've trained them to operate it, we then delegate the responsibility to them for, for, for performing that task, for running that system. Okay? So we've systemized it, we've trained them, we then delegate them the responsibility. So we're now into responsibility within the ownership, accountability, responsibility model. But we can't then walk away as managers, because if we walk away, how do we know it's performing? So we have to follow up, okay? Simple as that, we have to follow up. We've delegated the responsibility, we've got to follow up. How do we do that? Well, we bring in accountability. We bring in accountability and we put some KPIs in place. So we've got some sort of numeric process to easily check what's going on. Accountability, that's our follow-up. We then have to follow through because we've delegated somebody the responsibility, but we still own that process. Unless we've made somebody else own it, we still own it. So we've got to follow through. And if at any point this isn't working, the KPIs should be telling us this isn't working. And in the follow-through, we then have to go back a bit to the process. 
And we either have to look at, is the system working? Is the system itself a good system? Does it work? Right, okay, if it does, great. Have we trained it properly? Second point, have we trained it properly? Third point, when we delegated it, was the person we've delegated it to clear about their responsibility on that? If it's not working, one of those three things or two of those three things or all three of those things are going to be wrong, then that's what we've got to go back and fix. So as a, as a diagnostic process, this, I think, solves pretty much any process, any management process in the business, if we go back into that. I coach this with clients. I've just come off a call with a client today who their Simpro is not working the way they want to want it to work. And this is what we've done. We've just gone back into the process. Now we've got to get into the detail. We've got to get into the numbers. We've got to get, you know, we've got to get uh, into the weeds of the problem, you know, to sort it out. But that for me is the simplicity of management. Within that, obviously, we've got all the people side of things, we've got to train people well, we've got to manage them well. But there's a simple, straightforward process. Any 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 thoughts on that, David? I mean, you know, how 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 does that gel with you know some of the some of the things you coach out with your clients and some of the things you see your clients do? It's it's a really nice visual aid to root cause analysis isn't it it's it's a nice way of looking at actually breaking down the elements of what a process is made up of and <clears throat> helping to identify the different parts of it and then figuring out which bit needs to be fixed mm. traditionally i've used the sort of five whys you know why isn't this process working why has that not happened why has that not happened so it's quite a nice way of dovetailing that into that process yeah, yeah, it is. I, 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 another of my clients was in meltdown last week through overload, uh, and 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 we went through we went this through through this as a process, and what we got to was that he was being overloaded by his team who weren't following the system. They weren't pre-qualifying people who were being pushed to him in the way that the system asked them to pre-qualify. So. Um, his business partner was, because um, he was very stressed, his business partner was then going to go back into the, in, into the team and say, right, OK, we've got a system. Is it good? Right. Now, we've trained you to use it. OK. Do you need a bit more training? OK. We've delegated you the responsibility of doing it. You're not doing it because it's now coming through. And if we're not careful, John's going to have a heart attack shortly because we're just flattening him. <laughs> You know, and, there was, and, and, and it was the simplicity of just taking that back and, and you know, and, and I, I then asked her to look at the, the KPIs that need to come into place to tighten up on the, the, the follow up so that we don't go straight from delegate to breaking point. So nice example of that, actually, because it, it, it removes the emotion from the problem solving part, doesn't it? It removes, like you said earlier, that sort of blame and making excuses of other people and things because you're you're talking about the subjective side of it as opposed to the emotional side of it. Yeah, absolutely. So when we're doing the di diagnosis in there, you know, it starts off that, you know, the client was absolutely on the point of breakdown. So it starts off on high emotion. So we've got, you know, we've he's, he's clearly had a period where he's been in denial, you know, and, and we've got a lot of blame going on and a lot of excuse about the market and da blah, blah, blah. So what we've got to do is got to get out of that. And if we're going to get out of that, then we start to think about this. How do we get out of it? Well, okay, what's the system? Train, delegate, uh, and, 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 and so on. And I wasn't brutal on this one, but um, one of our fellow coaches, not, not very far away from, from you, has a wonderful series of three questions. Oh, that's interesting. Who hired that person? Yeah. Okay, really? Okay, who trained them? Okay, all right, that's interesting. So who manages them? Yeah. <laughs> who, who's allowed it to continue? Yeah, who's allowed it to continue? <laughs> and, and when you take the personality out of that, the emotion of that, it's all in this process. Which um, which element would you say in your experience with going through this with clients 
which element is the most common art that's missing or not working? Follow up. Okay. KPIs, lack of KPIs. <clears throat> I, I, I think, you know, as often when we start talking about KPIs, um, we're, we're in a situation where um, clients are thinking, oh, yeah, no, well, that's a bit, mm, that's a bit management. Mm. And, and, and we need to get into that conversation. And, you know, KPIs stands for Key Performance Indicator, but let's turn that around and think, okay, well, it could stand for let's keep people involved. Or it could stand for let's keep people uh, incentivized. You know, yeah. or, or it could keep, stand for let's keep people interested. I, I quite like rephrasing it as key KPA key performance area so looking at the activities involved to deliver the results so the the number is the result you're looking for but there's activities involved to generate that number at the end of it and that's the activities the area you, you're focusing on the job yeah. functions yeah but I, I i think you know in terms of where where things often go wrong i think kpas is a good way of thinking about it where where you know for for, for us as, as, as coaches Trying to get clients to put KPIs in means that we're getting the follow-up. What often tends to happen is we create a good system, we give the training, we ask them to get on with it, and then we find six months later it's fallen over. Why is it fallen over? Well, we're, because we haven't been doing the follow-up. Now, if we're doing the follow-up and we're getting the information that this process is working, that's great. And if we're getting the information that this process isn't working, and we just go back up and fix what isn't working. But you're absolutely right to point out that by following this, we take the personality out of it, we take the emotion out of it. Yeah, that's that's what I love about this process, Tom, that it um it creates accountability without being personal. Yeah. So so you can't possibly go through the review as you've described it without creating accountability but we're not pointing the fingers at anybody whilst we create that accountability we're asking them to think through the process and arrive at a conclusion um, which is going to lead to the lead to the solution I, I, absolutely and, and the fundamental element of ownership if something isn't working in my business well actually it's me yeah you know because i i own it so if i'm not <laughs> Doing the, if I'm not do, getting the KPIs and doing the follow up, and I don't do the follow through, then why is it going to get any better? Yeah, it's it's ultimate ownership, isn't it? It's, <clears throat> we're owning the fact that we put a system in place. Is it the right system? Does it work? Yeah, we're owning the fact that we've trained somebody to operate that system. Have we done enough training? Have we done enough work in that area? Yeah, and we're we're owning the fact that we're then leaving it for somebody else to do. Have we delegated it in the right way? And then ultimately owning how are we tracking it are we measuring it are we monitoring it are we making sure it keeps working spinning those plates keeping them going how are we doing the follow-up yeah are the kpis coming through every every monday meeting at the, the lion meeting are the kpis being reported that are telling us that everything's running okay great true, true. The, the kpi bits reminded me of a story again of a fellow coach actually who owns an electric electric electrician's firm and there's a story he often tells that they had a process in where an engineer was at somebody's house and they then did a, a you know a drop next door next door across the road on the three doors just to say we're in the area we're doing some work we want to try to keep the noise down if there's any issues or concerns or anything here's our details give us a call obviously that's a lead generation strategy as well and he was in a review with his business because he no longer is involved in the day-to-day -day operations. He's in a review with the business, looking at the numbers, looking at the KPIs and saying, actually, why is that dropped off? Why is that profitability in that area dropped off? So that's the KPI. That's the result. But it allows you then to dig into the detail behind it. Mm. And it turns out when they dug it, when they did the five whys, when they've gone through the process review and all that sort of stuff, that somebody had forgotten to order the cards six months ago so the whole process stopped because they didn't have any cars to drop in so the engineers stopped doing the process because they didn't have any cars to give yeah very easy to fix yeah. bicycle cards off they go go again <laughs> and, and 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 isn't that a wonderful story that actually sometimes it's the simplest little gaps in the process that that cause it to fail yeah exactly yeah 
great 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 amusement yeah yeah justin any 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 thoughts around this or you know where where do you see this potentially working with your clients <laughs> Well, the, the first thing is I've not I've not seen somebody make that connection between the uh, uh, the point of power and this analysis tool before. So uh, so it's very interesting. And as I said, I think it's it's a fantastic way of, of gently turning the, the 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 finger back towards uh, towards the business owner, but without doing so in in, in a way that they they might feel. Um, um, <clears throat> as though they're being picked on for want of a better description um but uh it, it allows them to to, to, to come to the to, to, to define the solution um themselves <clears throat> and as you say very often um in all of our businesses the business owner is 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 by and large the the biggest barrier to growth in in most circumstances but um yeah I, I love the simplicity of it uh, and I can see this working with uh, any of my clients who have uh, a reasonable size team where they're where they're in a situation where they they are now delegating mm. um because as we know if you don't delegate properly you know there are there are rules for delegation and if you don't follow them um it doesn't work it becomes abdication and uh you, know, you end up with problems uh so this is a great way of, of of identifying where those problems are occurring and whether it is to do with the uh, uh the way in which it's being delegated or the way in which it's being followed up or whether the system is incorrect so although they've been delegated properly the system doesn't allow them to do the work in the way they're supposed to so yeah very very simple but i think very powerful uh, for anybody that has a has a team if you take that you know the word delegate and you 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 go into the action coach process for delegation well this is it right create the system train the system delegate it making the person responsible Put the KPIs in place, monitor the KPIs, and follow through. And 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 that is absolutely the, the simplicity. You know, if, mm. if we're working with a client and we download the 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 delegation process out of the system, that effectively is what it says. That's the process. Yeah. Oh, Tom, when you do this with with a with a client or with a member, do you go through? In Pretty much what we've just gone through do you show them that process and talk them through the steps and help them to learn that yeah yeah I, the client um you know last week's client who was in a bit of a meltdown through through overload um you know we we, we probably had 15 or 20 minutes discussion for me to start to understand what was going on and then into this tool and and start to say okay what what you know what's happening and 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 use this as a diagnostic tool say okay what's happening and you know what's happening is there was a perfectly good system that has been trained but it isn't being you know the responsible people are not operating it so okay back in reinforce that and then put the kpis in place that allow you to see whether there's a change and and and, and that's it and that actually calmed the whole situation down and the the client could see you know 20 percent of their workload lifting which would give them the, the the breathing space and the headspace they needed and do you find your clients then start using this on their own initiative this structure this framework <clears throat> i think i think it depends on the client some clients pick up a process and are very good at managing processes and they will then adapt that and put that into the in, into the business, and it, it you know it depends. Every client's different, and I think it depends. For me, it depends on how clients learn. Um, and some clients will take this and put it into three different places in the business straight away. Yeah. And other clients will go through the pain of something and go through this process three times before they decide actually what well, this is really quite good why we keep coming back to this and i get it now and and and, and everybody's different i think um you, you know the, uh, the 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 beauty for me about what we do as coaches is every client is different every client thinks their business is different well no matter how different you think your business is if you've got people in there 
this works. Yeah. And, and I think that's the beauty of what we do as, as, as coaches. This is a, a strong process for, uh, for any business to improve what they're doing if they've got a team that are working in that business. Yeah, I think that's the power of coaching, isn't it? You're helping to educate and support people to then use these techniques for themselves. So you're not just problem solving, keeping that technique to yourself and working through it and then saying, that's your problem you know, fix that problem, you're okay, <clears throat> educating the client to be able to do this sort of stuff in their own time. So you've got a system there that works and you're training your clients to look at the system and then allowing them to go off and use it and measure it. So you're following your exact process with your clients by going through that process. Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely right. And I think, you know, we, we, we have a different perspective on our clients' business than they have because they are in the middle of it. And, and we're looking from the outside and you know my my background um big business external investors so i had accountability to my investors i, I you know i, I had a non, non-executive chairman in, in, imposed on my business and I kind of when he arrived and i was brand new running business i thought oh that's interesting i wonder what he's going to do you know, i've got no idea and um but then you know when we got onto the ground on the mine um, you know, I would walk onto the mine maybe once a week and I would see things that the guys on the mine every day didn't see. The manager of the mine who maybe went around three or four times a week, depending on how things were running, would see things from the production guys down in, in, in the field, moving, muck, lifting coal every day. He would see things differently to them. So we'd all have a different perspective and we would all be thinking about different levels of, of, of processes and system right up through to the investor. You know, and the number of times that, you know, I found myself as chief exec of a, a, a big and fast growing business, slightly embarrassed by the question that I was being asked by the investor, I could, you know, list as long as your arm. But that question moved us forward. And and, and so I think, you know, for me, in, in, in our role as coach, sometimes we're, you know, using things like this in, 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 in the role of coach or mentor, dependent on which hat we're wearing that day, you know, and sometimes we're wearing a finance director's hat and sometimes we're wearing a, a, a non-executive chairman's hat. Depends depends what's going on for the client that day. You know, but it all comes back to if we have some simple processes and some simplified thinking around how we're managing the business and we've got a problem going on, this to me is okay. This is a good process, but this is also a great diagnostic tool, yeah. and that's how, that's why I like it. I like it as a great diagnostic tool. Yeah, very good. I love the simplicity of it as well. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated, does it? Keep it simple. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Yeah. Okay. Was that helpful? Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Thanks.